A no commentary version of this run can be found in the pinned comment in the comments section below. Keeper Security is the leading cybersecurity platform for protecting individuals, families, and businesses against password related cyber attacks, aka hacks. These attacks can lead to identity theft, financial loss, and reputational damage. Experts predict that cyber criminals will increasingly target the gaming industry over the next three years. With Keeper, you can create strong, unique passwords for every account where you log in, but keep them stored safely in your own encrypted vault. Visit keeper.io slash beastcoast and use the code BEASTCOAST in all caps for a 30% off promo code. Stay safe out there. This video is intended as a game walkthrough. It is not a speedrun. All strategies in this video were made for efficiency and success rate. Please watch the entire video and listen carefully to the commentary before trying any of these strategies for yourself. Hello everyone. This is a no damage S rank run of I said This is a no damage S rank run of Resident Evil Survivor. There we go. In 1998, a disaster struck the quiet Midwestern residents of Raccoon City. An uncontrollable outbreak of the umbrella-created T-Virus transformed the city into an inescapable death trap. To stop the outbreak from spreading, Umbrella Incorporated was forced to wipe out the entire city. However, this was not the only location where an outbreak occurred. Where am I? Oh! I... I don't remember... anything. Who am I? So, Resident Evil Survivor is a deceptively hard game to get a no damage run in. A lot of really cheap things can happen to you, but at least it is possible. You... you look familiar, but... Oh, um, but I just can't remember. Ark Thompson, huh? Though I can't remember anything, 
I know that this was no way for anyone to die. What? So zombies in general can be killed within, I don't know, something like... Something like 5 to 10 handgun shots, depending. You might notice, first and foremost, the first thing that I do is I aim for the groin. Or I aim for the groin-ish. The reasoning behind this is because you can see, like, whenever they are dying, they sort of stumble forwards a little bit. Like, they kind of curve forward at, like, a 90-degree angle. And uh, the, that's pretty much the reason why I shoot them there. Because if I keep spamming the button, then that way, whenever they keel over, you know, I'm still shooting them. And I'm not whiffing the shots above their heads. I'm pretty sure that's, like, the main way that the video game stops you from actually, like, uh... From actually, like, uh... Getting the, uh, required accuracy rating for S rank. You can get your S rank in a new game. The requirements for getting an S rank are, I believe, 90% accuracy, 130 monsters killed, and beat the game in under an hour and a half. So we're going to avoid that room over there, and we're just going to take down these three zombies over here. Just gloriously cheesing up that accuracy rating. Man, I had no idea how loud this game was. It's kind of ridiculous. Even my compressor is not kicking in right now. I gotta do better to EQ my stream and my commentary audio. Who's in? So this is our first encounter with a spider, and spiders just go down in anywhere between like seven to ten shots. Thing is, though, some areas. It's just not a good idea to fight spiders, especially because they can spit acid, and acid just has, like, crazy range. We got the church's rear key. And then we we're able to exit the church. So for those of you who have never played Survivor before, you can actually, uh... There's actually, like, a lot of branching paths in this game. Which you actually see in, like, multiple playthroughs. Like, for instance, we used the, uh... The key that we got off the zombie, and we had, a th and we had three choices. We had the, uh, the movie theater the restaurant, or the church, and I went church this playthrough. So we gotta run over here, grab the cracked key, and then merc to the right. That liquor will almost always jump. In general, unless a liquor is in a very, very tight, confined space, of which there is, like, only one instance of in the entire game, we just, like, run around them. Vincent. Who is this? Vincent? Who's that? Wait... Am I Vincent? Vincent, you are a murderer. A murderer! A, a murderer? What are you talking about? Answer me! Who did I kill? <laughs> to go into the hospital because I want handgun B and also because hospital has the most enemies we can kill. Also in my opinion, it is the cannon path. 
<laughs> I won't allow you to escape. You're going to pay for what you've done. <laughs> Zombie over here, take him down. Then there's going to be three more zombies in here. This panel, we can grab the key out of the MRI machine. Very conspicuous place to be putting a key it's in an MRI machine. Like, wouldn't that shit just like completely destroy an MRI machine if someone had like a key in their pocket when they laid on that thing? I think that's how MRI machines work. Originally I wanted to do this run picking up files and whatnot, but I don't know. If I didn't really pick up many files in my other runs up to this point, this doesn't really make too much sense. But I will at least make note of their locations in this run. There's one file right behind us, which I believe is the uh, second file that we pick up in the game. We can go upstairs and then go directly into the door on the right. There was actually not really much point in me visiting that room, I don't think. It's alright though. Curve to the right, turn on the power switch. People who have played this game before will probably notice, like, I might be turning a little fast. The reason I'm doing that is because I'm tapping L1, and L1 just cycles between, like, objects of most importance to objects of least importance. And in this case, objects of most importance are generally, like, enemies. So it starts with, like, enemies until you kill all of them. Then it goes to items that are in view. And, uh, beyond that... It cycles between doors. So this room is actually kind of tough because we need to um, we need to start with handgun B. We got the handgun B in the other room, and uh, we need to take these guys down like basically just like one at a time, but fast. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, yeah, like, uh, 14 shots, and you go into the menu, you reload, and just, like, try to take them out where they stand. 
got to be careful to count the shots because if you do t if you do 15 shots then it'll trigger the automatic reload and that's bad because then you'll be locked into that reload animation you won't be able to switch guns and you won't be able to defend yourself but sometimes it's okay to trigger the reload because it is faster overall to just let arc reload the gun manually Basically, my general rule of thumb is that if the enemy is not going to get me and there's going to be enough time for me to shoot him after the manual reload, I just let it happen. I just let the reload happen. But in that room over there, like, I cleared that first zombie so that I could run towards the, uh, the dropper. The intravenous dropper. And then turn around and, like, kill the other two guys. I also picked up the, uh... I also picked up that red herb there. The reason I did that was because I wanted to be able to equip the, uh, well, reload my handgun a little faster, sorry, not equip, reload. Like I just wanted to shift my handgun bullets down one slot so that I'd be able to reload a little faster. So I did that. And then we're going to run forward over here and trigger the first appearance of Mr. X. Basically, this island is a tyrant manufacturing plant. And the means by which they make tyrants on this island is pretty fucked up. So once we get all the way over here, we gotta, like, you know, get our... Like I said before, uh, mag dump down to 14 bullets. And then reload manually. So that Mr. X doesn't gain any ground on us while we're reloading. Basically, if Mr. X gets too close, I mean, his his uh, his swing attacks are pretty wide, and sometimes he can do what I like to call his either his Gundam punch or like his ass blaster. But basically, he just does a he just does like a silly fucking Gundam slide towards you, and it's completely undodgeable unless you kill him. It's the worst attack in the game. So once we get down this elevator here, we buffer up and left and run, and uh, try to squeeze behind the spider if it drops down. Otherwise, if the spider doesn't drop down, we just run straight to the door. Um, I don't shoot anything in this room because if you if you wait even half a second, then those spiders will just vomit on you and just completely end the run. Probably the worst room in the game, truth be told. But yeah, the route that I chose was just so that I could shoot as many enemies as possible, as was safe to do so. A picture. No, this is me. I am Vincent. It was all my fault! Who are you? Wait. Please don't kill me. I, I didn't know anything about you then. Stop! Before we exit Janitor Andy's weird room here, we gotta grab these shotgun shells. I don't know, Andy's, Andy's weird. He just takes pictures of everyone. These liquors over here are going to drop from the vents. We're just going to run right by them and go to the ladder. Generally, liquors are hard to hit, but very, very, very easy to dodge. Unless, like I said, it's a very narrow area. So this room can have one of three different kinds of, like, zombie spawns. They could either be, like, really close to you, they could be really far away, in this case, they were like really close by. I just decided to rush right through them. I don't necessarily know that that's like the right move, but I still did it anyway.
once we go in here, there's going to be four zombies, sometimes three, but more often there's four. Just tap L1 to lock onto the closest one, mag dump it, move on to the next. I'm not sure if zombies always respawn whenever you come in here, but gotta shoot him again. This time on the way out. Man, I really hope this recording turns out okay, because I really did not expect the gunshots to be this loud. Save me noise gate. Save me ducking and side chaining. In this next room coming up, every so often, some of the zombies might be in the cells or something. Well, just might be completely in the cells, down, and they just, like, might be getting up or something. But a lot of the rooms where there's zombies have, like, generally one of three different kinds of spawn placements. reason the game considers the uh, the dead bodies to be more important than cycling to the doors, which is kind of unfortunate. After we take down that first zombie, we're going to run forward because in this particular enemy pattern, there were two zombies on the other side of the shower and I would have gotten pincer attacked. So I had to make some ground so they wouldn't bite me from behind. There can either be hunters or dogs here. Um, in this particular uh, pattern here, what I did was I just shot once and made sure that I caught both of them so that they'd be knocked over, and then I got a little closer and then I shot them again. If any were left straggling, then all I would have to do is mash fire to be able to kill the, the to be able to kill the uh, one that survived. We're going to use the rope, and we are going to make our way into the nightclub. Reason being, I wanted to kill Mr. X as much as possible so that I'd have enough ammo. I'm actually not sure which way is the safest, but I think it might be the, uh, I think it might be the parking garage. 
I got a little closer than I was supposed to get. I was actually supposed to shoot him as soon as I dropped down. But yeah, you can see I'm also like shooting Mr. X like while he's dying and while he's going down because like I said, it allows me to cheese my accuracy rating. So yeah, fighting Mr. X is not completely terrible as long as there's plenty of objects to shoot him from behind. Mr. X takes about three magazines to kill. But I, uh, I choose to dump an additional 29 bullets into him, though, just to be safe. Because you never know when he's going to get back up. Like I said, though, not really, because it's a tyrant manufacturing plant. So all these tyrants, they just, they just die. Like, they're just dead forever. After we grab this ID card here, we'll be accosted by another tyrant. What we do is, uh, we grab... We grab him while he's coming around the corner, and then we do 28 bullets, and then what I do is I bait out a punch, because he's going to be close enough for me to do it. Very, very, very rarely at this distance does he actually do the, uh... Does he actually do, like, the Russian, like, Gundam punch? So as long as we can bait out like his left or his right hook, then we're completely safe. So next up we're going to go into this room here, and then we're going to turn around. shoot the crap out of Mr. X whenever he comes back around the corner. Reason being, if we just went ahead and started shooting him, then he would be too close, and there would be a very, very, very high chance that he would do his Gundam punch. So we gotta be... We gotta be just absolutely dumping bullets into Mr. X from this distance. After about four clips, he'll go down. Every bullet counts. Even if it seems like it's not doing much damage, gotta whittle down his HP as much as possible. Give ourselves as much of a head start as possible. Handgun B has like the weakest uh, power per shot. It has the weakest power per shot, but I think that Handgun B has like the highest DPS out of all the handguns. And also has like a pretty decent stun percentage against Mr. X, so I just feel like it's like the best handgun to be using against Mr. X, T-103s, Tyrants, whatever you want to call them. Umbrella. So this is where the city is controlled from. What's happening to me?
Gotta go in with our shotgun still equipped. There could either be hunters or there could be lickers in this room. If it's hunters, we gotta kill them immediately. Which the shotgun will do. So to talk a little bit more about hunters, yeah. Hunters, if you try to run past them, will just keep jumping in front of you. Because they're assholes. That's just what they do. So next up, Zamboni's here. There's five of them, as you can see. Just rush over, pick them all off one at a time. Dumping a lot of ammo into them while they're dying. Gotta cheese up that accuracy rating so that if we actually do miss shots, it doesn't count against us that much. Walking for a moment just to check. Listen. If it's lickers or hunters, if it's hunters, then we gotta stop and shoot. me so we're gonna back into the trigger where mr. X bursts through the computer and in doing so, we can just like walk over and grab the card because the card spawns next to the desk. Well, it gets thrown next to the desk. But for all intents and purposes, it just like gravitates. And then we can just like shoot the crap out of Mr. X and we're done. Always, 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 always pray for shotgun shells. Always. Shotgun shells are very important. Because shotgun shells generally destroy most enemies in like one or two shots. Grenade launcher does okay damage, but... You know, you can't rely on it. Because there's plenty of room to run around, I'm just letting the uh, ammo deplete itself completely. So that that way, I just reposition myself and get ready to shoot the next one while I'm reloading. Just save myself little bits and pieces of time going through these rooms. What? Vincent? It's me, your mother. My mother? Vincent, please, listen to your mother. I want you to leave Umbrella. I want you to stop performing those terrible crimes and just come back home. Shh. 
Don't be afraid. I'm not going to hurt you. What is the tape you are listening to? I, I don't know. I was only listening to it because I'm so bored. My brother told me to wait here. Oh, let me go home. Your brother? Leave her alone. Lily, run, go. Lord! Put that down. I won't harm you. I promise. Liar. You'll kill me if I drop it. I'm not stupid. Now stay back. Don't come any closer. I know you think that I'm a murderer, but you're wrong. I would never do anything like that. The next room coming up is one of the big gatekeepers of the run. Basically, we just have to be as accurate as we possibly can and squeeze off as many shots into Mr. X while missing as few as we possibly can. I usually like to back up a couple of steps, though. In order to get a little bit of extra head start. And I passed. Unfortunately, passing any section with tyrants without taking a hit is just a total DPS check. Never been a fan of DPS checks. This is pretty much it. Oh, by the way, you can swipe the card over on the machine in order to avoid the... Yeah, really loud. So, there's dogs here, and we're going to equip the shotgun. Shotgun generally kills dogs in one shot, thereby making it the safest option for quickly farming up these dogs, which are generally good kills, good quick kills. Gotta keep our shotgun equipped for this next room coming up. The hunter will jump in front of us. Just pop him, and he's done. The next room coming up, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to face the right hand wall and depending on what direction I get pushed by these spiders, I will either keep moving towards the ladder or I won't. But because I'm sandwiched in between the two spiders, all I gotta do is just angle myself at a uh, bit of a uh, bit of a 270 degree angle away. I think it's anywhere in between like, anywhere between like, I don't know, 270 degrees is about where these spiders are not going to hit you, but if it's within like 45 degrees, then they are going to hit you. It's kind of it's kind of difficult to describe what makes Resident Evil survivors hit detection work and what makes it not. But I think the general idea is as long as they don't see you, they won't hit you. It doesn't work as well for tyrants, though. Tyrants can fuck you up. 
you kind of have to feel out tyrants if you're going to like be walking backwards behind them. Don't be afraid. I won't hurt you. Where's your brother, Lot? Please, you have to save my brother. He said he's going to the factory by the ropeway. Factory? He told me that he could find a way to escape from this place inside the factory. But there are tons and tons of scary monsters there. I know that if he goes there, he's going to be killed. What? <laughs> Please. We've already lost Mum and Dad. You've got to help my brother. Please. I promise. Don't cry anymore, Lily. I may have been a bad person, but that was before. That's not who I am now. I will save these two kids. I swear it. Lily, you hide here. I'll go find your brother and then come back for you. Two more zombies spawn outside of Lot's house. So now we're going to go up here, we're going to take the cable car out to the mountain. Got to make sure that we equip our shotgun whenever we get in here though. Sometimes that dog will get by, but if he does, you know, it's like another another shotgun shell will do the trick at that distance. Also got to watch out for the hunter that jumps out. Before we get on the cable car though, we got to make sure that we reload the shotgun so that we have enough uh, shotgun shells for dealing with all the hunters. Also fuck that liquor. Thirty-four is a pretty hefty number of shotgun shells. So from that distance, even if that one hunter gets reset whenever you shoot him when he's like falling down. You're still going to be able to time it so that you can actually kill him. Although hunters can sometimes gain weird frame advantages for no reason whatsoever. So always good to keep that in mind. So for that tyrant, fire 14 shots, we'll turn, 
and move towards the dogs. Because the tyrant will be, like, moving towards us. And that gives us just enough room to be able to merc him. Go shoot the dogs. And then we go to this gate. And then we're going to spin around and shoot him with the handgun. Just mag dump his ass. Put his ass in the past. So, I accidentally went through this gate. I wasn't supposed to. I was actually supposed to go to the mine shaft. If you go down this path, then you have to fight four tyrants. And this tyrant can... There's a chance that, that he'll, like, fucking ass blast his way over to you and just end the run. So I'm just trying to stop, wait until I can see him, get visual confirmation, and then start mag dumping as fast as humanly possible. That was actually a pretty bad pass car seat mistake because this section is actually pretty fucking risky. Yeah. Nah, fuck that. The bright side to this section, though, is if you know where the uh, tyrant's tether point is, you can kite him backwards. As long as he isn't facing directly towards you, you can generally mag dump him, but it's like when he's facing towards you, that's when you have to, like, back up. You can see I'm just like I'm just like cheesing him, getting him to walk backwards by walking into his tether point. Walking, we can hear we can hear him moving down. Because of the speed of his footsteps, that means he's aggroed. So we gotta wait for him to come this direction. We gotta wait for visual confirmation. And then boom 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 boom. There's backing up minutely because I don't want him to like wind up a Gundam punch because once that wind up starts forget it you're done sometimes not even curved terrain can save you but basically going backwards and cheesing this guy is going to be the safest way to deal with him kind of sucks that none of these tyrants actually drop any ammo for you. It would have made going down this route worth it. So you can hear the footsteps are slow. Once you hear the footsteps speed up, that means he's walking towards you because he sees you. There's the backup. You can see it's like you back up in exactly the right spot and it goes out of range and he just turns around and walks the other direction other direction That's the end of this section. It's like an additional like five minutes or something like that. Stupid obnoxious. But in this next room, there's either going to be dogs or there's going to be hunters. So 
Shotgun's out. We can just snipe these assholes. There's only two of them. In the next area, there could be dogs, there could be spiders, but because the area is so wide open, if you get dogs, it would be completely unpredictable. So my recommendation is to just run straight for the door. If you're just trying to go for a straight S rank though, then yeah, you can shoot the dogs. This room has anywhere between one to three hunters. It either has one or three hunters. So I turn towards this one by holding back and right, and I just wax him. That guy got taken down with one shotgun shell, fortunately. Sometimes if all your shell if your shell pellets hit, then they just die immediately. I don't know if that's like a critical hit or what, but it works. Before we head down the stairs here, there is a uh, well hidden. Well, not very well hidden, I should say. Slightly obscured thing of grenade rounds. Grenade rounds actually have a little bit of use against Mr. X because if you shoot Mr. X with grenade rounds, sometimes it'll proc a block animation where he just like crosses his arms in front of his face. And if that happens, you're actually able to run around him when he does that. And he won't hit you. Which is kind of useful for this room, but I would still recommend mag dumping here. Four clips will do the job. Four magazines, sorry. Meanwhile, that guy over there is just, he's just not even trying, because the AI in this game is uh, pretty special. Because this is a room where tyrants can randomly spawn in, this also means that the tyrants here do not carry any ammo whenever you kill them. Zombie was way too close. See, I squeeze past that liquor. Whenever you go into that hallway, like two rooms ago, you just gotta make sure that you hug the wall to the left, and then you can just squeeze right by the liquor. After we 
grab the Mo Disc. Um, I started walking into this room so that I wouldn't like trigger the liquor to start moving. But basically, uh, once he gets into that hallway, then he, he becomes a huge pain in the ass and it's like next to impossible to dodge around him. So that's why I opt for just killing him. He tanks like a lot of acid rounds, by the way, so just use just use the shotgun is my recommendation. Lickers actually have like stupid HP in this game. I know that's like a super licker, but they still have stupid HP in this game. Ivies takes a while, but it's still necessary to kill them. There's like, what? Two over there, two over there, two over there, two over there. So there's like, there's like eight Ivies that you have to kill. Zombies, they, they're, you know, it's just more zombies. They're just naked. Four zombies come pouring out of that uh, monster closet there. We shoot two, sometimes three of them, but these other ones, yeah, there's an invisible wall there, as you can see, so you gotta be careful of that. You can only really shoot these guys if you're completely in the room, which is a uh, very weird programming quirk. rounds there. I mean, Monster Closet is a pretty apt description. It can be used for a number of video games. Final Fantasy 2 has Monster Closets.
we gotta be careful with these guys. The thing about the thing about the uh, plants is they can actually track you through the walls, so they can move. They can. They're 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 one of the few enemies in this game that can actually like strafe. So they'll like track you through the walls and they'll just kind of like slide around and strafe around and shit. If they get too close, then we pop them with grenade rounds. I'll also show you in a second why grenade rounds are very risky. I don't get hit here, but I fucked around and I found out. Try to snipe this guy. Only one of the grenades is hitting, but you could see the range. You could see the range on that poison. If I was any closer, when I tried to fire off the grenade launcher, I probably would have gotten hit. So after that, I decided, okay, it's time to play it safe. So, generally, Mr. X drops, like, one of three kinds of ammo. Either he'll drop shotgun shells... Well, he'll drop one of four kinds of ammo. Shotgun shells, grenade rounds, acid rounds, or flame rounds. And he didn't drop flame rounds a single time this run. So these are the only flame rounds we get. And flame rounds are, like, the only grenade round that are actually, like, good against Hypnos Tyrant, the final boss. So we only got, like, six the entire game. Still got a lot of shotgun shells, though, which was not bad. They're creating these monsters on this island! So yeah, once again, another DPS check. Just be firing. Just be blasting. Uh-oh. Fortunately, whenever they get too close, they start to slow down. Ah! I'm just really lucky he didn't ass blast towards me. Anyway, so we grab the uh, grenade rounds, and before we go into this room, we got to make sure that we equip the shotgun because we're going to be fighting a hunter and we can't move. <laughs> Take him down in one or two blasts, and that's it. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. What are you talking about? It's not your fault. Vincent is the one who caused everything. Well, I mean, I... You? What do you mean? You're the detective. Your name is Art Thompson. What? Really? I'm not Vincent? Then why did you run away from me? Because I'm the one that told Vincent about you. Hello, I'm Vincent. I've been transferred to this facility to inspect it. Nice to meet you, sir. I know Commander Vincent. So I knew that you weren't him when I saw you. What? A spy? Hmm. Thank you. You are a good boy, Lot. 
So then I'm Ark and not Vincent. Lot, do you know of any way to get off this island? My dad told me that there's a railway station up ahead from here. A railway station? I heard that it runs underground. Okay, we'll use that. Let's go get Lily. Go ahead! Hurry! We'll meet at the station! The self-destruction system has been activated. This island will self-destruct in ten minutes. All the personnel must evacuate immediately. Repeat. All the personnel evacuate immediately. That's right! At the request of my friend, Leon S. Kennedy, I came here to investigate. Oh, yes! I remember! I remember everything! Tell me the truth! You are a spy, aren't you? I'm not Vincent, I'm Ark! So because there's really not many enemies left in the game, we're free to use our shotgun shells now on the zombies. I've been saving shotgun shells for like all of the stronger enemies that we need to kill really quickly because zombies are really slow anyway. Shotgun headshots actually do kill the zombies in one shot. You can actually hear like a unique sound effect that happens if you shoot them in the head, like if it's a critical hit. It's like a really loud thump. And uh, once you hear the thump, that means you that means you got it. I was uh, debating which one I wanted to equip. But then I decided, you know what, shotgun shells are pretty good hit scan from a distance, so I thought I would try sniping the plants with the shotgun. I would still have plenty of shotgun shells left over for Hypnos Tyrant if I needed them. Because the plan for Hypnos Tyrant would be to use the remaining flame rounds and shotgun shells in order to advance to Hypnos Tyrant 3. Funny enough, this is also when I discovered that shotgun shells put in fucking work against ivies. I was actually really happy to learn that. Someone someone in Twitch chat just, just made the quip shoot those broccolis. I'm just gonna call them broccoli from now on. So, the shotgun does best against Broccoli. Final note is over there. Yeah, no, that's fucked up, man. They, they, they just, like, they just, like, cut open the pituitaries of, like, teenage kids while they're, like, still fully awake and conscious in order to be able to get, like, a brain secretion that makes tyrants super aggressive or something like that. Lore in this game is super fucked up, but also intriguing. <sighs> Vincent! If it wasn't for you, I could have completed my mission. Umbrella was going to take care of me, but you had to go and screw it all up! Now, you're going to pay! No. 
So here's a fun strat that I actually learned from the speedrun. All you gotta do is just fire a grenade round at the uh, Hypnos Tyrant's foot and just like have it walk into the, uh, the AOE and it just dies. I don't remember who discovered that, but what a fucking discovery that was. Props to that person. Over here, two more tyrants pop out of the tubes. We got really no choice but to run around them. Best thing to do is to just uh, hang right, bait out the first punch, bait out the second punch. I think because they aren't walking directly towards you in like a straight line, they're not going to like do the Gundam punch or anything. So I think it's actually okay to actually like bait out their, uh, bait out their hooks. Get on the train, hurry! If you immediately go to flick the switch for the gate, then you will encounter four sweepers, no, sorry, cleaners. They're, they're called cleaners, which are like humanoid B.O.W. like a cleanup unit. Basically, they're there to kill everything like B.O.W.s, zombies, humans, basically erase all evidence of anything that can be tied back to Umbrella. But uh, if you exit back down the elevator and re-enter, they will not spawn here whenever you flick the switch. So you can just go the entire game without ever encountering a single cleaner. With their stupid hitscan spam. extra shotgun shells there, just to kind of ease the pain. So we gotta run in with our uh, flame rounds equipped. We're just going to advance the next form really quickly. So like I mentioned before, flame rounds are the only thing that's actually useful versus Hypnos Tyrant. And here is why, because Hypnos Tyrant doesn't actually guard proc any of your grenades. Any of your flame grenades, I should say. Basically what I do is I just like keep going back and left until I hear an attack noise or I see like his claw just like go across the screen or something. And whenever that happens, I just like hit L1 and I fire off a flame round immediately. And uh, once we run out of fl flame rounds, his uh, HP has already ticked down quite a lot. So we just need to finish him off with shotgun shells. Just gotta make sure that he's in a safe position for us to shoot him. So there. Gotta take that opportunity now. He's gonna claw again. There it is. Bam. Shotgun shells also have a very high stun percentage. So keep that in mind.
so now that we're here, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to equip the Magnum that we picked up earlier. I completely said nothing about the Magnum. But uh, basically, hit scan guns are your friend against this guy. And uh, if I run out of uh, if I run out of Magnum rounds, which I'm pretty sure I just like don't even run out of Magnum rounds, then I switch over to acid rounds. Whenever we get down to one Magnum round, you just always gotta monitor your Magnum rounds. But basically, the uh, this boss is fought the same way as like the previous form. It's just bigger and more badass and more intimidating, but. Really, he just does the same exact thing. Um, we just gotta make sure that we, uh, when we're down to one bullet, that we reload manually, no matter what. Because the uh, reload animation, you have to wait for like the bullets to drop out of the gun, and then he has to load them all in manually. It's really, really, really slow. So I do not recommend manual or automatic reload for this. Pretty sure this is like straight up the best weapon to use against Hypnos Tyrant 3. Yeah, I didn't even run out of Magnum rounds. And that is Resident Evil Survivor S rank, no damage. Also, no saves, but you can't save in the middle of a run in this game. Anyways, thank you all for watching. So, yeah, some of the some of the dev names in the credits here are pretty amazing. This game was actually not developed in house by Capcom. It was developed by a uh, company called Tose, T O S E. I don't actually remember what else they've done, but they've worked on like a lot of spin-off games for like a lot of other companies. I think some Square Enix games as well. I just like don't know. I certainly uh, think that. If anyone's going to be poaching these guys, it's going to be pretty tough with a name like Hey Bay Here Adira. Or Kiss Dice Kids. Or Momonose Ryoji Plus T. But anyway, yeah, if you liked, uh, if you liked this run, please check out the rest of my no damage runs on my channel if you haven't done so already but i'm guessing you kind of like found this video through like other runs that i would have done and not just by like 
typing Resident Evil Survivor in the search bar. I'd be pretty impressed if you did. But yeah, uh, check out my no damage runs. Follow my Twitch stream, twitch.tv slash SDA. I do all of my runs and all of my commentaries there live. Say hi, Twitch chat. If for whatever reason you feel compelled or moved to monetarily support my bad speedrunning and challenge run habit, you may do so on my Patreon at patreon.com slash SDA. Yeah, this game, nah, for, for, for like for like all the bad rap it gets, I mean, I'm not saying that it's like a great game, but uh, I don't know, in my opinion, it's like far from like the worst Resident Evil. Funny enough, it's actually quite technical for a bad game, but I guess a lot of bad games are. Anywhoosin. Thank you all for watching. See you next run, next video. Whatever it is, whenever it is. And just like that, I've done all four PS1 Resident Evil games, no save, no damage. Fuck yes. Come on, I gotta feel myself a little bit. Let me. See you guys next video. Thank <laughs> you.